Hello again, everybody. I want to welcome you to Wednesday in the Word. I am Steve Eden, senior pastor here at Grace Church in Choctaw. This is my guest, my good friend, Matt Bacon. Matt, how are you? Good, good. Thanks for having me. You bet. I'm honored to have you on. Excited to talk uh, with you. Matt is uh, on the board of directors here at Grace Church. He's also one of our worship leaders. He and Scott Knapp oversee the worship team. And uh, so delighted to have you on. Now, here's something really cool right off the bat. We had planned on having him on a couple of months ago, and it had it's fallen right on uh, the topic on Sunday of meditation, uh, which includes words that we speak over ourselves, and it's really tied together, Matt, with your testimony. Right. So uh, one of the things from Sunday in, in defining meditation, biblical meditation, to think upon over and over, to ponder, to image or visualize, to reflect upon, to consider deeply, and then also to speak. And one of the things that you and I had talked about, Matt, was um, the most important voice that we can listen to right. is the Lord's voice. But the second most important voice <laughs> is our own. Right. And we have a propensity, you know, to speak death over ourselves oh, yeah. sometimes and agree with the enemy. Um you know, and I, I kind of jokingly said on Sunday that we put the accuser of the brethren out of a job. He look, peeks in on us, but he's like, well, they got it covered. They're right. just beating themselves up. You know, that was kind of part of your journey. You and I yeah. had started visiting every Thursday, which what a blessing that's been, probably yeah. about a year ago or something like that. Yeah. But uh, we began to talk, and as we visited... You started to discover you had believed yeah. a lie about yourself. So tell tell everybody a little bit about your testimony and your journey there of what you were facing and how the Lord's transformed you. Yeah, so um, I've grown up in church my whole life pretty much. Uh, went to a Christian school, uh, was raised in a, a Christian faith family, mm -hmm. yep. you know. Um, but everybody has their issues, right? So mm -hmm. Uh, mine predominantly came from my dad. Uh, okay. He grew up in a very harsh environment as a child. So when you grow up in those things and you you don't come to terms with them, mm -hmm. they bleed over into your next you environment. You end up reproducing. Right, it's just yeah. a vicious cycle. Yeah. So, you know, he, uh, his issues became my issues as, <laughs> okay. as, you know, our Heavenly Father is our example. My fleshly father was my example. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. And as a child... You don't know you're doing wrong until you either experience the you know reality of those repercussions, mm -hmm. or you know somebody tells you. Um, so I was brought up in this just. And my, my mom was golly. If it wasn't for her yeah. and my aunt, great woman, mm -hmm. my my aunt Jeannie and my uncle Jackie, those three big pillars in my upbringing um, throughout all the tribulations that we went through. Yeah. Um, that I now, as a, at a later age, realize mm -hmm. how much truth they were speaking to me yeah. in those moments when I wasn't applying it. Yeah. And there was, I think there was a stronghold. There's a lot of barriers at work keeping oh, yeah. you from seeing or hearing uh, truth. One of the scriptures I had shared with you was Acts 13, 46, how uh, it says that they judge themselves yes. unworthy yeah. of eternal life, which is knowing Christ. And one of the things that came out of our discussion was you realized, I I feel like I, that, that the Christ life, the blessed life, the godly life is for everybody else, but it wasn't for me. And you had kind of judged yourself unworthy of that. But what a great statement. You said you had allowed where other people were at. And that right. includes your dad, yeah. includes uh, church people yeah. you've grown up around, uh, right. other people, influences, that where they were not at was determining where you were. Right. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So when you grow up in those environments, um, you're not aware of how you're just existing, coexisting in those environments. You're using, uh, I grew up in church. I grew up in worship teams. Mm -hmm. I grew up, you know, in a Christian school, and I assumed that was enough. Even the Christian school. Right. And and yet, battling this idea that maybe that best life wasn't Right, wasn't and I was completely you. using where other people weren't to say where I was. So if, yeah. if they were stumbling and falling, mm -hmm. I was stumbling and falling right along with them. Yeah. And and my upbringing with my dad just led me to, to constantly be disappointed in people. Yeah, and hard for you to trust people because yeah. you had faith that people would disappoint you. And it's something yeah. that, you know, just in the last year, meeting with you and, and making this tr ship change, this mm -hmm. directional change, you know, I didn't realize fully 
just how I was living and dying by what where other people were or weren't. Yeah. But then more importantly, I was living and dying by just setting myself up for failure. Yeah. It didn't matter. Right. You know, my own wife <laughs> suffered from my issues with this, my <laughs> right. children, you know, where I was just immediately I would go to, you're going to let me down. Right. So I'm just going to sabotage or I'm going to, yeah. I'm just going to be miserable mm-hmm. in here. I'm going to exist with it, but I'm just going to be Right there on the verge of just expecting the worst outcome. Well, and then when they would, because let's be honest that everybody right. does big pieces of stupid. Everybody's got their issues they're walking through. So when people would let you down or they would fail or disappoint, it was just building your case in your head that this is my lot in life. Right. Uh, this is how it's going to be. And just allowing their behavior and their uh, missteps to really affect you and the, the quality of life that you were going to live with the Lord. Yeah, one big revelation that I had in this past 12 months was just uh, my work environment, where I work is 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 a harsh environment, mm-hmm. uh, spiritually for sure, but just uh, emotionally, mentally, um, and all that plagued, in, plagued into where I was at. So it fed this fuel, mm-hmm. and then 12 months ago I came to, just everything came to a head. You know, all my past choices, experiences, yeah. where... Uh, I start listening to Dan Moeller a lot, you know, after <laughs> right. a couple of our meetings. Yeah. And what I love about him is he's just like, stop doing that. You know, right. yeah. stop believing that way. You so remind me of Dan yeah, Moeller. And goodness. that's why I gave you, I, I so said, relate you need to, to listen him. to this guy. You yeah. sound just like him. I so relate to him because it's just like, it's <laughs> it's easier said than done, of course, right. um, to say, stop doing it. Stop thinking that way. Stop letting those influences come into your life. Right. Stop detonating these bombs around <laughs> you before they're even bombs. And he will, he's not going to let you live as a victim. No. I mean, and I, so, I, I see that in you, and yet I think part of what we had talked about was that's a little bit of a victim mindset that 100%. you were in as far as I'm allowing what other people aren't in Christ yeah. to affect where I'm at and what I, I can be. I completely just thought, you know what? The things have already been set in motion for my life. Yeah, that was it. People. I remember that. And and my own, so I just I'm in survival mode here, mm-hmm. uh, and I had been taught through my church upbringing too the lie, and I'm not saying those people were liars. They were all we're all in the same boat yeah, here, right? In the sense of when you're in heaven, everything will be good with you. Everything's right. fine. Yeah. So you just roll with the punches down here. You know, <laughs> take your beating while you're here. Hopefully, then... God recognizes you <laughs> when you're up there in front of Him. You know. Yeah. And it's it just so. You you know, as soon as I made that connection through talking with you and, and other people, yeah, um, I just was like, wow. Yeah. Like, he did that so we can have him here. That's we can right. live him out here. Because right. if we aren't living him out here, mm-hmm. we're not doing the world any benefit. Yeah. You know, if that, I mean, survival mode is, is the worst outcome for right. any growth. And I still remember the day the light was coming on that, hey, how it's always been doesn't mean it's got to be that way. Right. Going forward, you men, you know, you've got a lovely wife, Krista. You've got Brinley and Raylan to think about. Yes, and he began to realize, hey, just because it's been that way prior, me and the Lord can change everything going forward. I don't have to judge myself unworthy, and I can begin to let Him change the way that I think. And read Romans twelve uh, verse two because that was one of the ones that the Lord really used for you and started yeah. changing lie based thinking right. for the truth. Yeah. yeah, so this verse was one that the, the Spirit just gave me that was so, I mean, there's so many, but this one is so applicable to today. And it's, it's Romans 12, 2. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's changing the way you think. Right. <laughs> Every counselor everywhere, if they're good at their job, says, well, you got to change the way you think. You yeah. Know? Um, and then, you know, the rest of that, then then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Good and pleasing and perfect. I mean, that's just a no-brainer. If you're setting with the Father yeah. and you're submissive to the Holy Spirit mm-hmm. and you wake up every day and say, Lord, I don't know what's going to happen today, who's going to do what, how I'm going to do things, yeah. but I'm giving it to you. Um, you know, yeah. my work is my worship. You yeah. know, there's there there is nothing impossible here. I'm yeah. just going to be a servant of the kingdom. Right. I mean, connected to you wherever I am. Correct. Every yeah. day. I think it's interesting as you listen to him share that he really believed God's will or his lot in life at one time was not going to be good, acceptable, and perfect, but rather, well, 
uh, down and out. This is just the way it's going to be. People are going to disappoint me. I'm going to disappoint myself, my family. But the Lord began to wash away all those lies with truth. And it goes back to Jesus saying, John 8, 32, he said, if you know the truth, if you, if you hear my word, you abide in my word, you let me speak truth to you, then you'll know the truth and the truth will set you free. Well, this is, think about this statement. If knowing the truth is what sets a man free, believing a lie or lies is what will set us into bondage. Right. And that's kind of where you were. You were a born-again Christian, but you right. were enslaved to your own thinking. Yeah, and the warfare inside eventually started bleeding out to the outside where it was affecting my marriage, mm -hmm. my kids, my relationships with people yeah. um, because I just wasn't ever going to give them an opportunity to let me down. So oh. I had already defeated myself before I even showed up. Well, sure, and, and think of it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you're not going to disappoint me. I'm, I'm, I'm right, disappointed. I'm myself. disappointed already. So you have no control over disappointment. So a little self-sabotage there. Oh, yeah. Wow, man. But I grew wow. up with that. You know, I mean, yeah. and the older I'm getting, the more I, I dwell and reflect on my relationship with my dad. And a lot of the stuff that happened with me and him didn't even come out until the last year. Yeah. You know, I kept a lot of stuff buried because mm -hmm. to me it was one of those things where... Well, if you just don't talk about oh, it, yeah. it'll go it'll away. Go away. Well, just... That is not true at all. You know, <laughs> if you don't come to terms with it in your heart and then speak it out to people you can be vulnerable with and trust, you know, and not speak it out in a victim way mm -hmm. where, hey, I need sympathy and, and attention. Yeah. But just say, I'm declaring these things as they have no hold on me anymore. Yeah. You know, I'm That's... not going to give them that control. Yeah. It's so powerful and keeps you kind of at a distance. Were there uh, layers, do you feel like, that kind of like uh, layers of an onion, if you will, that he began to peel back? Lies that you would believe that he started exchanging uh, for truth? Or, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it really came out of me telling, you know, in myself, but then just saying, you know, Lord, I'm giving you these issues. Yeah. Because I have been trying for, you know, 30 plus years of my life. Right. To, to, to not deal with them or, or to or, fix them. Well, yeah, you know, sure. And it ain't working. To solve them by you know? ignoring them right. or being upset about them. Yeah. Yeah, and, it, and, it, and you don't value other people when you're in those places. You know, you look at people as more of, of dependence or obligations in your life. Yeah. Which is so detrimental because that's, that is not even what they are. You know, you look at your spouse like I'm, you know, I agreed we married each other, yeah. And now I'm responsible for you, mm -hmm. so I just gotta figure it out, yeah. You know, my kids, we've had kids now, so there's even more equations brought into this. Instead of looking at them at the potential within them, but if you don't realize the potential in yourself mm -hmm. and the health and wellness in yourself through your relationship with Christ, the Holy Spirit, wow. then you're no good to anybody wow. else. Wow, you're yeah, you just leave it living out of a defeated posture. So one of the things we'll get into this coming Sunday is Philippians 4, verse 8 and 9. And I mentioned it before we ended on Sunday that that could be your uh, little homework assignment. But Philippians 4, 8 says, whatever is true, whatever is pure, whatever is just, whatever is uh, worthy of praise, meditate yes. on these things. And I love what you're saying because it becomes the lens not only that you're looking through about yourself. The Lord starts retraining you. Hey, I've made you pure. Right. Here's the truth about you. So we start meditating and washing our mind with uh, the true things that the Lord says about us. But it wasn't just true about you. Now it's true about Krista. Right. Now I'm beginning to see what's what's worthy of praise, what's true, what's noble right. about uh, Raylan or Brinley, you mm. see? And so it doesn't just apply to us. And once he starts injecting truth into us, yes, it does apply to us first, but then it becomes the lens we start seeing our family through. And right. that, now you're looking at a family being touched and transformed by the Spirit of the Lord. Well, and then do you think of the of the the amount that, that those individual people, Krista, Raylan, Brinley, mm -hmm. if I'm investing in them and, and I'm, I'm listening and attentive to them and helping them as the husband, as the head of the household, mm -hmm. um, then their potential when they're at work or at the grocery store or at school. I yeah. mean, and, and that's just them having the comfortableness to be able to share what I'm sharing or supporting yeah. in them. Yeah. And <clears throat> how, how needed today, there is so much, we were talking about this before we came on, the world is just regurgitating so much 
vomit and death right. seemingly on a daily basis. We need to have our families washed in truth. Our yeah. children and our grandchildren need to be, you know, a lot of times we'll say, uh, good night, don't forget to say your prayers. Mm -hmm. And that's probably going to be some kind of a need-based, you know, self-focused. And that, that's right. okay. But what if we were saying good night and don't forget to meditate on truth. Don't yeah. forget to take a moment as, as our child or our grandchild to meditate on what is true. I think our families need that washing yeah. of the word. I think a lot of it too, we really don't need what we think we need. Yeah, it's it's more of a want or mm -hmm. hey ultimatum issue. Oh like, hey, yeah, you know. uh, ask and for and things. I'm not saying that we I'm shouldn't ask the Lord for things. That's definitely not what I'm saying. Yeah. But we have to be cautious because when we ask and we ask and we ask and we don't receive, then mm -hmm. we we hold a debt or we hold. That's right. You know, we're saying, well, if he really loved me or if I was really good uh, enough or if I would have been more listening and attentive, then I would have gotten what I wanted. Yeah, and instead he's just saying, hey. Yeah. Is this line with the truth? Is yeah, this a line with that's the truth? That's so good because it draws us into transactional, performance-based, where, we're, like you said, we're literally creating debt in our yeah. mind, like he owes me something. And I don't think any of us want to go to God and say, hey, give me what I deserve. Yeah. <laughs> that doesn't sound like a good, a good prayer. But uh, you mentioned before we came on, you and Krista were sitting together this morning, oh, and yeah. she said this statement. She said, we meditate on all these negative things and don't even realize yeah. that we're thinking on and pondering them over and over again. And it was, you know, a little funny, but it's a true statement I mentioned on Sunday. How many of you have ever stayed up all night or several hours a night pondering worst case scenarios, you know, and then they're like, yeah, I've done that. Yeah. And I said, well, then you know how to meditate yeah. because that's what meditation is, yeah. is thinking on something over and over and again. I thought that was really telling where she said, if we're not careful, we're just doing this yeah. and not even realizing it. Yeah, you're not, you're flipping the script. So you're, we're already doing the, the things that we're doing to meditate and spend time with the Father, but mm -hmm. we're making it in a negative way of like a gain or, mm -hmm. or all the things around us, the noise pollution, you know. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, instead, you flip that. You just go to your quiet place. You spend time with the Lord. You meditate on hearing His voice and, and then share yeah. what He's speaking to you. Right. You know, but that comes in in your meditation and quiet time with Him, mm -hmm. not... And I can attest to this as many times when I've sat down in my quiet place to meditate, when I start, my mind starts becoming inundated with things I did or yeah. didn't do or I have to do. Mm -hmm. And that is nothing but a ploy of the enemy mm -hmm. just to keep us distracted. Yeah. You know, so it takes discipline. Lots of distraction. It takes so much <laughs> discipline, yes, man, and just dedication to, to buying into what he's doing with us and in us yeah. and not tethering ourselves to the world and then tethering ourselves to the Father mm -hmm. and see which one pulls harder. You know? <laughs> right. Matt's one of the uh, ones that we do an elder study uh, with a group of men on Sunday nights. And it was you a few weeks ago that as we were kind of talking and praying into how can we help the church body live aware of and acclimated to applying the mm -hmm. truth which Jesus came to bear witness of, give evidence that exists instead of just the natural world, you were uh, the one that said, you know, I think discipline is a key. I think spiritual yeah. disciplines are a key for all of us to be able to live in the real reality instead of all the white noise and right. all the stuff coming from the world that we're really acclimated to, to the truth. Yeah. Yeah, <clears throat> well, I think it's real easy for churches, pastors, religious stuff mm -hmm. to make dependence. You know, they're they're not creating any discipline within their congregation, their staff, their worship team. Yeah, to be able to hear the Father, be disciplined to the Holy Spirit, and then follow those steps for on. their own relationship. For their own relationship. Because when you're talking about dependence, you're talking about like they become dependent on the church, yeah. or dependent the building, on the speaker, the they're pastor. dependent. Right, right. Instead of ha being discipled or. Yes. Uh, connected to Jesus themselves. Right. That's that's a great point. Talk mm -hmm. more about that. When, that's when, right. Whenever, whenever we always are told, you know, growing up, you know, well, you better live the right life because when you get to to meet Jesus, you know, he'll either say, "Depart from me, for I never right. knew you." Thumbs up or thumbs or, down. Yeah. Well, what's he? <laughs> what's it saying there? I never knew you. Well, he wants a personal relationship with you. That's right. You know? Amen. And he's knocking on the door. You got to open it. You got to take the steps to do this. And yeah. then you have to learn to be disciplined enough. You know, I think of the Mary Magdalene story in the Chosen, where you showed me. Uh, you know, last week where she was like, I can't do this. Yeah. Like I'm naturally bent towards 
going the bars, to the bars, yeah. hanging out with lustful sexual things. Yeah. You know, I'm just naturally like that's that's whenever I feel vulnerable or weak, I'm just going to go to those fleshly go, things. Yeah, go back to well, what I was trained in. You know, whenever she tells flesh. Jesus, you know, I just can't do this. Mm-hmm. And he's like, you're right. You can't, <laughs> you can't do it. You know, you have to be disciplined and just in tune to know that when those things come, when those thoughts arise, yeah. those negative relationships, those whatever it is, if it's not true, mm-hmm. you know, you say all the time, the truest thing about you is what God right. says about you. Right. Well, the most other truest thing is what are you saying about you? What are you, you saying about you? you know, yeah. If you say, yeah, I'm no good, I, I've had all these issues, and every time I, you know, I struggle, I go into addiction, whether it's alcohol, pornography. Yeah. I mean, and nobody's immune to this yeah. stuff, but it takes discipline, spiritual discipline. Mm-hmm. And God, the Holy Spirit, you know, just to say when those things arise, no, I'm not giving in to those things. Isn't it fair to say that once you realized, hey, the Lord loves me too, that yeah. I can live in the good, acceptable, and perfect will yeah. of God, I can have companionship, that that change, that, that really empowered you to start sitting with Him, yeah. sitting in Scripture, spending time with the Holy Spirit. Because before, it's kind of like there were walls there because that life wasn't for you. Yeah, and I had built the walls. You know, yeah. I, I had I was reading through a discipleship or a, a, a devotional one day, okay. and this was early, you know, into my last 12 months, and it had a picture of a person inside of this castle. And it said, this is what, you've built Mm -hmm. and here is the people that love you wanting in but your walls and your boundaries your barriers are so high you know because you don't love yourself that was my biggest problem i was never taught you know Mm -hmm. through my watching my dad live his life Mm -hmm. you know how to love yourself yeah you know and and not you know in a a, like a a self-gloating or self-promotional sure yeah but if you're not you know the truest thing about you is what God says about you. The most important voice is God's, but the second most important voice is yours. Right. What are you saying about you? Right. You know, I mean, that's like, I mean, any good therapist, if they're worth, worth their weight, will teach you. What are mm-hmm. you thinking? What are these negative thought patterns? Right. You know, what are you saying about you? I think, uh, and you brought this up the other night, I think acceptance is such a key that I have an acceptable self yeah. before the Lord. Now, myself is not perfect. Yeah. But I've given it to the Redeemer. Right. I have given it completely into the Lord's hands and therefore I can accept myself. Yeah. yeah. I'm okay with me. I'm not the finished product yet. I mean, right. my spirit is, but the rest of me is under construction. Yeah. And I think that was a tremendous breakthrough that you had because yeah. once you know you're accepted in the beloved, and you said this, I think it was even uh, the other night when we were just visiting, that now, or no, it was Josh Kirkus, that now, despite my weaknesses, mm-hmm. The Lord is with me, right. and he's teaching me, he's coaching me, he's helping me through those, not abandoning me, right. not shaming me or disowning me, right. but he's with me in the process of making me more like him. I want to share one last thing before we let you go, and I'm going to have Matt pray. Mm-hmm. Uh, Psalms 19, verse 14, may, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let's make sure that what we're meditating on on a daily basis, a regular basis, and start early in the morning if you can, <laughs> when, when there's not a lot of white noise going on, right. but train yourself, acclim- acclimate yourself to the truth, the things that the Lord uh, says about you. Would you pray for yeah. us? Yeah, dear Heavenly Father, man, we're just so grateful and thankful just for how much you love us, Lord, and yes, just Lord. how accepting you are of us, Lord, when we don't accept ourselves and we don't speak truth about ourselves, Lord, yes, I'm just Lord. so grateful that, that you are always there. You're always striving, Lord, just to help us reveal to ourselves mm-hmm. through you the mm-hmm. truth. Amen. Yes. Lord, I ask for this church. I ask for uh, the staff, the worship departments, tech teams, Lord, the community around us. Yes. That as we grow in this understanding of what you say about us is important, Lord, and also what we say about us is important, Lord, yes. that we would be able to make a difference. We'd be able to make an impact, Lord, in this community, in our families, in ourselves. That as we just pursue this relationship with you, Lord, we sit in our mm-hmm. quiet place, we shut the door, and we listen to the voice, Lord. We praise you. Mm-hmm. Lord, I ask that our work would become worship. Mm-hmm. Lord, that you would just immerse us in the truth and mm-hmm. just in the reality that you are good, you are God. Amen. And we are vessels here 
just to make your kingdom known on earth, Lord, on earth as it is in heaven. Yes. In Jesus' name, I'm so grateful for this family yes, of Lord. believers, Lord. I pray that the fruit would be good fruit, Lord. And if it's bad fruit, we would clip it off, Lord. Let you let you trim us off so we can be yes. fruitful and flourish with you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks, everybody.